Hi everybody, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am reviewing The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. Um, I have a lot to say about this one, so strap in, grab a snack, and let's get started. I just want to preface this video by stating there will be <laughs> mild spoilers about this book. I will try to not do anything that is too intense and gives away too much, but I will have to talk about certain aspects of this to talk about my feelings about it. So just be warned, I will remind you when I'm getting to that point in the video and put a spoiler alert up on the screen. But for now, let's just go ahead and get into this. So The Writing Retreat is a thriller about a woman named Alex who has been a bit of a unsuccessful writer. She has just about given up on her career. She's been through a year of writer's block following a pretty bad falling out with a good friend. And she gets invited to go to this writing retreat for a month in like a secluded town that is being hosted by one of her favorite writers. The deal with this retreat is they have a month to complete a brand new novel from scratch and the winner gets, I think it's like a seven figure publishing deal, like something pretty, pretty good. Um, and there's a very limited number of spots. So Alex gets extremely excited about this. She wasn't somebody that was initially chosen. She did it when another person dropped out and come to find out she is a little upset by this because her frenemy, for lack of a better word, Ren, the friend that she had a falling out for right before Alex went into her major writer's block is also going on this retreat and they're going to have to deal with each other. They're going to be in very close quarters for a month's time. So they have to put on somewhat of a civil front. So that is our basic setup with the writing retreat. I will say this right off the bat. I was very, very excited for this book because I am a writer myself and the very premise of this spoke to me. It's something that I would love to do. It sounds like a dream come true. But you know what the old adage says. If something seems too good to be true, then it probably is. This book speaks volumes to that. This has everything that I love in a good thriller. It's an isolated setting. It's a small cast of characters. Hello, it is completely centered around writing. So, did I love this as much as I should have? No. Um, it definitely had good points. It definitely had good points. Um, like I said, I, I liked the setting. I liked uh, that we didn't have a whole lot of characters. I liked the premise of it to begin with, but there were a lot of things with this that I just kind of wasn't digging. <laughs> I in no way think that this is a bad book. Um, I actually think that it was very well done. And I believe this is a debut, which makes it even, even more impressive in my opinion. But <clears throat> I will state this. These are grown women. The retreat was open to, it was supposed to be women in their 20s, an exception was made for Alex. She's 30. I'm not sure if there is if there was an exception made for Ren too, I don't remember that being explicitly stated, but this is a lot of high school drama. Um, there is, it's like for, for women that are like in their late twenties, 30 years old, it is a lot 
of high school type drama. And I have no patience for it. <laughs> I'm sorry. But once somebody gets to a certain age, I feel like that type of thing is completely inexcusable. And it was aggravating to read about it constantly. Like, a brief paragraph summary, whatever, I would have been fine with. Um, but the stuff that was going on with Ren and Alex, it's drama. And they were too old to be doing it. Um, it made me not really sympathize with either one of their characters. I did sympathize with Alex slightly more than Ren, which I guess was a good thing because she was her main character. But she was so whiny that I had a hard time rooting for her. And then on top of that, this felt to me almost like a genre hopped. Because the first half of the book was one thing. And then the second half was over the top, exaggerated, almost cartoon-like. Um, and it just felt like it was a different book. Um, both sides could be considered a thriller, I guess. Like At one point I was thinking, well, it's half thriller, half horror. Now that I've had some time to sit on it and absorb it, I no longer think that. I do think both halves of it are thriller, but it feels like two halves of a different book, if that makes sense. So um, the first half I was really, really into. I was intrigued. It was pulling me in. And then I want to say around 55, 60-ish percent of the way in, it started getting slightly convoluted and more convoluted as time went on. Um, and eventually I felt like I was reading a really, really bad horror book. So I don't know. <laughs> My thoughts are so, are so torn on this one. I don't really know how I feel. I don't know yet if this is one that I would read again. I don't know yet if it's one that I would keep. <laughs> um, so, to kind of discuss what I mean here, I will put in a small spoiler alert on the screen. You can either mute it until the spoiler link, until the spoiler alert goes off of the screen, or you can just click off of the video now. It's completely your choice. But the reason that I feel this way is because of how quickly the tides turned and it just felt abrupt and it felt like there was nothing leading up to it. So what I mean by that is one of the girls at the retreat named Poppy went missing the same night as a big snowstorm that was like several feet. And... They find footsteps in the basement and they're like, oh, she went outside and she was known to be a sleepwalker. So this by itself didn't bother me because that was established. And um, it, as tragic as it seems, that is very well something that could happen in this particular type of a setting. However, where it went off the rails for me was like the girls are trying to find her. They're investigating the basement because that's where she was seen last. And they find this secret door with a keypad and like a hidden security camera in the basement. And they start questioning things. They're like, oh, something's going on here. And it starts turning more into like, it just, it, it starts getting convoluted. And it's like they start searching their rooms for cameras and they find cameras in these, uh, necklaces that the host gave them and keep in mind the hostess is like their favorite author that's why all of them wanted to do this retreat and so she has cameras in these necklaces that she gave them she's been watching them so now they're thinking oh it's like twisted games is poppy alive is poppy dead um they don't know what to think and so they start trying to find another way 
into the secret room since they don't have the keypad for the door. And they, Alex literally finds her in a prison cell. And I'm just like, a hidden prison cell in a house doesn't seem very likely to me. It just doesn't seem like something that would actually happen. Um, and because the girls all know the secret now, they all get locked down there and they're forced to keep writing. And we get this huge reveal that their author hostess has never has has not written her own books. She has always stolen books from people around her. And this retreat was another way to do that. It was to get four new books. Well, five, because uh, there was an extra girl at the retreat. So I'm just like, it felt like it was going to be this tense. Okay, so the spoiler alert is over. So it felt like it was going to be this like intense, it's like drama in the isolated setting. I kept expecting maybe um, Alex and Ren to start screwing with each other because they already had beef. Um, but I was not expecting this. It was it was just a little over the top in my opinion it was you know it was <laughs> it was too much like we go from that to it being like literally this forced writing type of a thing and I'm just like it didn't make any sense to me at all, especially, and Alex pointed this out herself. This is another spoiler. Sorry. Alex pointed this out herself when Rosa, the author, is telling them why she's doing what she's doing and that she's never been able to write, but she can, she's always felt drawn to, you know, stories and she basically describes an editor's job and Alex points it out and she's like, you know that you're just an editor, right? <sighs> There's nothing wrong with being an editor. It's like, why did she feel like she had to be a writer to the point that she is literally going to imprison people and force them to write for her? Girl, if you wanted to be in the publishing industry, you could have just been an editor. You were good at that. <laughs> okay. Spoiler over. So, yes, I am still undecided about how I feel about the writing retreat. Parts of it were great. Parts of it were, what the hell was that? But you live and you learn. I am glad that I read it. But I'm not so sure I'd read it again. So what did you think of this book? Let me know down in the comments below if you have read this so far. If not, let me know what you're reading right now. That is all that I have for you guys today. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe, like, comment, follow me on the social medias. Click that bell if you want to be notified of all of my upcoming videos. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.